We wanted to be ready when the crash came, and we basically were. We needed a solution that ac accurately identified and corrected the real source of the problem. And what is that? The real source of the problem is simple, and you should never forget it. And it's easy to remember. Using debt in place of money. I'll repeat that. Using debt in place of money will inevitably lead to horrendous results. It might take a long time. It might take a decade or two decades. But eventually, that's what happens. And this happened, of course, in, in, uh, in the last few years. Again, it happened at one point in uh, the 1920s, in 1929. In our system, this is made possible by what is known as the fractional reserve system, which is uh, the, the method by which banks are able to create what we use for money. And the words are important here. They don't really create money. And it can be argued, oh, you people are wrong when, when you say that the banks are creating money. They're not quite creating money, but they are creating what we use for money. And they have that power under the present system, and that's what absolutely must be changed. Any solution has to understand that we have a battle going on with those who are promoting using debt for money and using a fractional reserve system. It is a real battle. And this, this was, is not generally understood. It's a con game that the banking establishment puts forward. It's a nefarious system. It enriches and promotes corrupt anti-human interests rather than promoting the general welfare as our Constitution requires. Now, I watched the depth of this, by the way. You have to understand. I watched Brzezinski, Carter's uh, national security advisor, being interviewed by I think it was Charlie Rose. And Brzezinski was telling Charlie Rose that the new world order, in his opinion, was bound to fail. Now this, you might think, is unusual to hear from Brzezinski. And the reason he gave to Charlie Rose was that unlike the old world order, which was Rome, the New World Order, Brzezinski thought, had no religious, no universal religious underpinning. Please turn off cell phones. We're the only ones allowed to make noise here. Thank you. So Brzezinski said, there's no underpinning, no religious underpinning, therefore you can't have a successful New World Order. Because Brzezinski did not understand that there is a universal religious underpinning today. It is there. And it's followed everywhere. What's it called? Commerce. What? Commerce. No, no, no. What's it called? Economics. Economics, Economics as practiced, is a religion. It operates without proof. It operates without facts, real facts. I mean, it can do certain types of facts, but not, uh, not the ones that back up its theories, for the most part. And it is used. Certain people always come out on top using economic arguments. And we've seen these people coming out on top in the crisis. And they happen to be the people who created the crisis as well, the banking establishment. They tried to blame the, uh, 
people taking out mortgages who couldn't afford them. They tried to put the blame on them for a while. That hasn't really lasted. They're essentially getting away with this at the moment, but it won't, I, I don't think it'll last that long. They're getting away with this through dominance of the media and through the fact that the President of the United States, Barack Obama, who we expected, who many people expected to be doing certain things, his Attorney General, the fact is his Attorney General has not prosecuted a single banker involved in this corruption. Thousands of them had to break our most serious laws in order to have this crash occur. They're not being prosecuted. I, I saw an article, one banker, a local banker was being prosecuted. Two guys got prosecuted. One, was an, one had an Indian name. So he prosecuted the Indian guy. And this fellow in uh, the Chicago area had uh, uh, some kind of an Islamic name and he got prosecuted for, again, not for the main things. So, the damage that this debt money system causes really can no longer be denied by economists. And it has been for a long, long time. The evildoers themselves, not just hardworking people, got into deep trouble and had to use all of their political power, corrupt political power connections, to force the rest of us to rescue them. Well, you have to understand, this is a battle. This is not about theories, really. This is a battle. The theories are excuses. The theories are fronts. If we have the power to rescue these people, we also have the power to prosecute them. And that is really called for at this time. I use the term evil that's rarely used in economics. Henry George used it successfully. And he wiped out utilitarianism in one sentence. Quote, a science which justifies injustice by throwing a halo of utility around their unjust practices. That's a uh, pretty much a paraphrase. You see, economics has removed the concept of morality because they tell us morality is uh, uh, a normative judgment and we're building a science and therefore we remove all of morality. They don't say we removed morality. They say we've removed more normative judgments. That's the term they use for, if they said, if they came out and told us we're removing considerations of morality from our science, we'd know what to do with them and what to tell them. But they have terminology which serves to confuse. And we must not be fooled by that. So. The term that is often used for the misuse of economics, the ancient term, is usury. And people think usury, they think the definition of usury is charging more interest than you should, charging a high rate of interest. That is not the concept of usury. That the old concept, the real concept of usury, which was just revived by, believe it or not, uh, Will, Will Greider on, uh, on the Moyers show. And he re redefined usury more accurately. Quote, the financially powerful taking advantage of the financially weaker. That is really the essence of usury. Now, the American Monetary Institute is a publicly supported charity started in 1996 by myself and Dr. Lucien de Wolf. She is going to be here, but she's not here yet, or I would introduce her. And um,
Technically, we're for the independent study of monetary history, theory, and reform. We continue as long as we have public support. We were started without an endowment, without any money. And our annual budget, uh, it's, it's really quite low. It's about what we would need to pay one full-time secretary if we were doing it that way. But we have succeeded to the point that we have, and there are some really important things that we've done. Because we're right. Because we've analyzed the situation correctly and are coming forward with, with real solutions. Um, so we will continue as long as we've got public support. We need your support. Whatever helps the AMI is a force favoring reform. Whatever hurts it is a force against reform, against humanity. Now, our results to date are on a sheet that you have there, and I'll go through them just briefly. This is in your kit. The first success, the publication in English of the Lost Science of Money book. And this required about 12 years of research. And how many of you have actually read it? OK. Almost all of you. Those of you who have not, do your best to get a copy of the book back there. It's on the table back there, along with a lot of other material. Now. The book resulted in the proposed American Monetary Act. And that is in this folder here. And you can come and get one of these. Uh, it's completely uh, uh, described there. The American Monetary Act then led to Congressman Dennis Kucinich's H.R. 2990 being written and actually introduced into the Congress. Now, H.R. 2990 is something that has not been done in this country for 225 years and actually introduced into the Congress. If you've read my book, you'll understand that at the time of the Constitutional Convention, they did not know enough to properly formulate the monetary power into the Constitution. Kucinich learned how to do it through us, through the book, through our people. This is an achievement, that this has been into the Congress. Do you understand? That means that if you had a majority of people voting for it, and 60 senators or 51 senators under the right conditions, the law would be changed and we would have monetary justice and a chance to develop without the kind of uh, uh, corruption that, that our country has suffered from. 